Hello and welcome to this mini gem brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is James Fisher and this mini gem is called Shake, Rattle and Roll, the Epley Manoeuvre. There's a couple of learning outcomes for this mini gem. Firstly, I hope that by the end of it, you're able to approach the dizzy patient with a bit more confidence. And secondly, by the end of this, you'll know how to perform an Epley Manoeuvre, which is a treatment for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. So benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPVV. If you come to this mini gem and you're comfortable with BPVV, but you just want a refresher in the Epley, then you've come to the right place. If, however, you're perhaps not as familiar with BPPV as you'd like, then what I'd suggest is before you watch this mini gem, I'd refer you to a previous mini gem that I've offered that focuses on BPPV. That can be accessed by following the link you see on this slide. So just very, very quickly, B is for benign. This is a bit of a misnomer, really. This condition can make people very dizzy, they can fall and sustain fractures. The paroxysmal refers to the fact that this tends to come on in sudden outbursts, the positional is really often the key to diagnosis. This comes on reliably when patients assume a particular position. The vertigo represents the fact that patients will often describe a, a, an illusion of rotatory movement. I think it's important to stress, though, some, sometimes the history can be really tricky to differentiate between dizziness, lightheadedness, wooziness, etc. And sometimes a question I find useful is asking the patients, does it feel like you're spinning round on the whirlers at the fairground? So you will recall that the diagnostic test for BPPV is the whole peg test. And before I play the video, just again a big thank you to Imperial College and their excellent dizziness resources that they have online. There's a link to access their content at the end of this mini gem and I'd urge you to do so. So the whole pike, you'll see here our clinician turns the head towards the affected side and lays the patient back such that their head is just below the level of the horizontal. You can see that he's carefully examining the eyes. And this is why. At this point, the patient will be complaining of a dizzy feeling, and you'll notice that there's rotational nystagmus. As the video continues, you'll notice that the nystagmus settles, and the patient will also report that their symptoms are settling. The fact that the symptoms are short-lived are classical for BPPV, and it helps to recall why they're occurring in the first place. You'll remember that there's debris loose in the semicircular canals, and when the head is rotated, Moving to this debris stimulates the hair cells and produces this illusion of rotatory movement. When the patient remains in the same place for a period of time, the stones settle and the symptoms will fade off. Okay, so we've confirmed BPPV with our whole pike. This is time for the epilies now to fix it. A couple of key pointers. Movement in an epile should be nice and slow and smooth. And in between phases of each of the epile, we tend to take about 30 seconds to allow the stones to settle. Epley starts off by doing a whole pike, and as you see in the video, the heads turn to the effective side. The patients lay down, and their heads just below the level of the horizontal. Symptoms are brought on, nystagmus is observed, symptoms fade, nystagmus fades. The first phase of the epley is to turn the patient's head towards their good ear. So you'll see in this video, it's turned towards the left side. This position is maintained for about 30 seconds before the patient's asked to roll over onto to lie on their good side. A further 30 seconds passed before you turn the patient's head again to look over their good ear. In this case, now you'll see now that she's looking down at the ground. The third phase of the epile is then to ask the patient to sit up. And again, it's important to try and maintain the same head position relative to the trunk. The final phase of the epile is to turn the head towards the midline and tuck the chin down towards the trunk. So there are a few important do's and don'ts after an epile. You probably don't want your patient to drive home. You really want to minimise the amount of head turning that your patient's doing, so it's important that they know about this before they come obviously up to the clinic. Secondly, we try and advise people to sleep on their good side. So for example, for the lady in this video, we'd ask her to sleep in the left lateral position. It can be quite tricky to stay in one position all night though and sometimes what we recommend is that you prop pillows up behind you to act as a barrier to, to you rolling over. It's also worth saying to the patient that you know most of the time, about 85%, this will fix your symptoms but for patients whose symptoms recur they may need a further epile manoeuvre. It's just important to make sure the patient has a contact person that they can get in touch with should their symptoms recur. So in summary, I hope that you're now able to approach the dizzy patient with a bit more confidence and that you now have a feel for how to perform an Epley manoeuvre to treat BPPV. 
So if you want to know a bit more about this, I'd, I'd recommend firstly the Imperial College website, which can be accessed via the top link. This has some excellent resources, including many more videos. Secondly, if you want to read a bit more about this, well, I'd recommend the bottom link, which links to a Cochrane review about BPVV. So thanks for taking the time to listen to this mini gem. I hope you thought it was useful. If you did, feel free to share it, tweet it, tell a friend, use it in teaching if you want. And please check out our website at aeme.org.uk for other resources including videos, podcasts and conferences.